Ohio is helping today's young entrepreneurs become the business success stories of tomorrow. Next on Ohio Means Business, how the state is embracing entrepreneurship and what that means for Ohio's economic future. Ohio Means Business on ONN. Presented by The Ohio State University, Ohio State University's Fisher College of Business, The Ohio State University Comprehensive Cancer Center, James Cancer Hospital, and Solop Research Institute, and The Ohio State University Medical Center. Thanks for joining us for Ohio Means Business. I'm Mike Kallmeyer. For many years, entrepreneurs would travel to the coast to turn their great ideas into businesses. But now innovation and high growth entrepreneurship are starting to thrive here in Ohio. The Buckeye State has slowly built an infrastructure to support startups. And now this so-called entrepreneurial ecosystem is drawing more attention from investors beyond our state's borders. We begin with a special month long look at entrepreneurship in Ohio and the role it will play in the state's economic future. On this episode, we take you behind the scenes of a new business accelerator program helping young entrepreneurs gain traction in Ohio. We'll hear from the key players, including Dr. Michael Camp, executive director of the Center for Entrepreneurship at Ohio State's Fisher College of Business. Rich Langdale, managing partner at Columbus-based NCT Ventures, who has pledged to make a major investment into one of the teams at the end of the program. And Ben Lagaman, risk capital program manager for the Ohio Department of Deve Development. He will be here to talk about Ohio's new entrepreneurs fund and the effort to draw new talent to the Buckeye State. While taking an idea and building a company around it is no easy task, and that's why the state is giving young, bright entrepreneurs an opportunity to learn what it takes to start a business with high growth potential. These young entrepreneurs are eager to grow their high tech ideas into new businesses. This boot camp is designed to accelerate that process. 10X was launched by the Ohio Third Frontier and Ohio State's Fisher College of Business. Ten selected teams are completing the intense 11 week program. Advisors, industry leaders, and seasoned entrepreneurs are helping them develop successful business plans that they'll eventually pitch to investors. The goal jumpstart these ideas into commercially viable startups. It's also a chance to nurture potential game changers that could become the next big employers in Ohio. Now, one of these potential game changers could help the retail industry reward customers better. One team is taking a swipe at their new solution that could benefit consumers and merchants. I was logging into Mint.com one day, checked my Starbucks rewards card, and then checking my credit card statement, and I realized that you know we're, we're generating a ton of information about ourselves every time we swipe our credit card. And I realized that I can leverage that information to get deals and offers from merchants, and merchants would you know die to have that kind of information. Then on the other side, there's like um, every morning I like wake up with dozens of emails from like Groupon and all these daily deal sites, and it's kind of overwhelming. Um, most of them are ir irrelevant. Like you know I don't need to go to a, a ball pen or you know get a massage every day. That's why Eric Kerr and Steve Gacka created Rewardster, an automatic rewards platform that links directly to credit cards and provides consumers with targeted loyalty rewards based on spending habits. Uh, we've started building out the underlying technology that powers Rewardster, um, but the, the, there's really three key things we need, consumers, technology, and merchants. And right now we're starting to approach the merchant side and then within a few weeks we'll launch a, a, a beta for consumer traction. These Ohio State students turned to the 10X program to help take their idea to the next level. We were definitely interested in the mentorship. Um, we saw the list of mentors and they're all rock stars. So um, we saw that and definitely thought, you know, they'd be able to help us out, especially launching such a, you know, big undertaking as a rewards there. Ray Sheely has been through this process many times as a serial entrepreneur. Rewardster is doing a lot of things right. Uh, they have passion and energy. Uh, the kind of that young uh, mode of let's change the world uh, and they have a great idea and when you kind of combine all of that uh, it's a pretty good formula for success. His advice for the team is to keep listening and realize plan A may turn into plan B or C. So far it's paying off. So we have um, pretty regular you know presentations in front of these mentors and advisors um, and then afterward there's always like Q&A sessions of you know what have you thought about this? Have you looked at this company that's kind of doing the same thing? Um, so it's kind of been a great feedback loop of 
um, advice that they can give, um, and you know where they see potential pitfalls. That is cool. Eric and Steve met on campus at the Business Builder Club, a group that connects students interested in entrepreneurship. Well, joining us today to give us a view from the top of the 10X program, we welcome back to the program Dr. Michael Camp, Executive Director of the Center for Entrepreneurship at Ohio State's Fisher College of Business. Michael, thanks. Thank you. That's good stuff there. And you yeah. know, my favorite phrase is business boot camp. That's really what it is, isn't it? That's exactly <laughs> what it is. It's about 11 weeks, and we're going to march them all the way from concept to actual start of the, uh, the existing company. So tell us exactly what's happening here. Rewardster is actually just one of the 10 teams, right? That's right. There are 10 teams that were selected out of 122 applicants that applied back in April. We selected those 10 through a very sophisticated process, trying to narrow it down, because there were a lot of great ideas, a lot of great teams in that, uh, that pool. So it's tough to do. The end goal here, I guess, is fostering an idea and, and letting these kids, I call them kids, yeah. which they are, letting them run with their ideas, right? Well, not, not uncontrolled or not right. without uh, <laughs> bridle. Uh, the important part here is that we actually corral those ideas into what would be a workable solution to a specific problem that customers are facing in the business community. It's not just ideas run amok, but these are mm -hmm. literally students that are focused early in their process on do we have a compelling solution to an existing problem that is a, a problem that could be solved and that they're the ones that they think that they can do it. From an idea to actually having a startup, and sure. the, the goal here is a startup company, from the idea to that, uh, what are the challenges to get to that point? Well, quite a few challenges. Mm -hmm. One, the inexperience that uh, any entrepreneur, in this case, these younger entrepreneurs bring to the, to the mix, means that they have to tap into some expertise. We bring a very rich mentor base and a lot of community support to give them the kind of accessibility to the, the live markets as well as the, the kind of real world perspective to say, is this just a good idea or have we really tapped into a, something that's a potential business that can make profit and turn a, a return on investment? Uh, another thing from that story that, that kind of struck me was the line turning plan A into plan B and then plan C. That's right. It's ever evolving, isn't it? It is. It will be even after they launch, even after they're done with the 10X program. But in this program, we go through three, maybe four iterations where they're face to face with their customers, pitching them on the concepts and solutions that they think are addressing specifically the problems that those customers have to a point where the customers would actually be willing to pay for the solution. They have to develop a functional prototype. They have to sit in front of these live customers and try to get a paid beta uh, installation with these customers and lastly raise follow-on capital that demonstrates that they can create the kind of traction a real world business would do. We, we use that term accelerator. We have a couple times so mm -hmm. far. What does that mean to you? Well, accelerator means, uh, you know, if it's just typical without assistance and without contact to live mm -hmm. customers, you have the risk of actually pursuing solutions that don't really meet the needs. And you could take months and years and burn a lot of cash to actually get there. We accelerate that process by bringing the experienced mentors to bear and to help these teams and coach them and also get them interfacing directly with the live customers in a much quicker fashion. We open those doors, we provide that accessibility, we give them that direct feedback, and from that experience, they may iterate three or four times in a 10, 12 week period that would typically take maybe 10 or 12 months. Well, as always, uh, Fisher does it better than anybody. Oh, thank <laughs> um, you. What, why, do, uh, why do you do it better than anybody, and how does Ohio compare with the rest of the nation? There's other programs like this out there. Oh, there are quite a few. Actually, there are a lot of great programs around the country that we could look at and model. Actually, Ohio has a couple accelerators already uh, throughout the state that mm -hmm. we were able to look at their programs and see what we might be able to learn from them and the things we could do. But, you know, Fisher brings a lot of great resources to bear, not only from Ohio State University and Fisher College specifically, but it's reputation and connections into the business community. Uh, the community, I can't say enough about how they've responded. And it's one thing to respond to Fisher College of Business, but when you day in and day out roll up your sleeves working with these startup companies, these young entrepreneurs, coaching them through these very difficult decisions, uh, it, it's the hats off to them. The, our entrepreneurial community is very vibrant and very active and been supportive beyond what we could have asked. And a testament to how popular this thing is. Would you say 120 applications? We had applications 122 and applications. took 10, right? We could only take 10. It's just the best we could do. And so I assume the success of this is, is good. <laughs> yeah, success is great. I know the programs around the country are, are getting a lot of great traction, a lot of great success. Uh, we anticipate that ours will be every bit as good once we can get a few uh, few classes under our belt and learn the ropes ourselves. All right, as far as the contest goes, what's next for the teams now? 
Well, next, we're, we're winding it down, to be honest with you. It sounds hard to say or odd to say, given we're only six weeks into it and we're starting to wind it down. They've got four weeks to get through early stage beta customer identification and get ready to actually pitch investors on September 1st, showcase day. In fact, the uh, part of the interesting thing is 09, uh, 0109 has been our motto all along, is we're getting to September 1 when they're going to have to stand in front of 200 plus investors and, and make their case. All right. I think the bottom line, and you mentioned this, is not just having the idea, but the, the getting to the customers, because isn't Absolutely. that the crux of the matter? That is, yeah. You know, <laughs> there's three important C's of every business, and it's customers, 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 and that's the model. We all we preach it over and over, and the teams have been pushed pretty hard to get in front of live customers, and those that don't are going to find it very difficult to survive at all, much less in a program like this, an accelerated program. Michael Camp from uh, Fisher College of Business. Thanks, Thank Michael. you, Mike. Good Appreciate to be with you. Coming up on Ohio Means Business, a venture capital firm invests in Ohio's newest strategy to attract and support young entrepreneurs. And later, the bottom line in the state's entrepreneurial ecosystem and its impact on Ohio's economy. Hey, welcome back to Ohio Means Business. The 10X Accelerator program provides young entrepreneurs a platform to introduce new technologies. And at the end of the 11 week boot camp, they'll pitch their ideas to investors. One Columbus based venture capital firm will be paying close attention. NCT Ventures has already committed $200,000 in follow on funding to one of the teams of its choice. And joining us now to go inside the research is Rich Langdale, founder and managing partner of the NCT Ventures. Rich, thanks for your time. Yeah, thanks for having You've me. You've been called an entrepreneurial guru. Is that fair to say? Well, I think it might be an overstatement, but I do enjoy entrepreneurship. All right, I, I, I love I love any gurus on the show. Uh, you're an OSU grad, and I want a little bit about your background, because I heard you sold your car for $5,000 to invest in your first company. Is that true? That's correct, my Honda Prelude. I, I love that car, but uh, decided to start a business and needed some capital, and uh, it's a lot more motivating when you don't have a car to work, so it worked out very well for me. And <laughs> since then, you have founded eight companies. Uh, yeah, there was uh, about eight companies that through the kind of late 80s, early 90s that I was the, the founder of. And, and since then, we've invested in and founded dozens more together with other entrepreneurs through our, our venture capital company. So you know what it takes to bring something from the idea stage to reality. That's what a lot of these kids are doing. I call them kids, but yeah. <laughs> uh, the college students uh, at Fisher and at an Ohio State. How satisfying is it for you now to, to give back and be a part of this for oh, the young entrepreneurs? It's so much fun. It's, it's actually a lot more fun than building the business because building a business, you have so many more stressful moments. It's a lot more fun to go in and say, hey, you should try this and then step back and let them actually try it. <laughs> what, how's it going so far? How, uh, how tough is this competition? What do you think of the teams? I think it's been amazing um, and, and better than I, I think we could have imagined. The vetting process really helped. Uh, we, we had over 100 companies that uh, applied to participate, so getting it down to 10 was, was hard in and of itself, but uh, the 10 that we've selected, there are a lot of quality people and a lot of quality ideas, and the way they're approaching it has been very exciting to see. Are you one of the judges? Uh, yes, and okay. there's, judging's kind of loose. Yeah, we're, tell we're us how mentoring. it works. The, so the original judging was to look at the ideas and say, in 11 weeks, could this plan become a real business? Could it reach out to customers, find interest, and potentially even start a business within just that 11 week period? And we had to look at the pool of mentors, so our ability to help. So I have technology company experience, so I specifically uh, looked at technology company experience. But uh, we also had people that understood medical products or other types of businesses that helped, and that, selection, that helped us with the selection process. And then once we got it down to 10, uh, we've now been trying to help those companies wherever we can. Uh, doing this in 11 weeks is hard enough for an experienced person, right? Yes. <laughs> Much less college students, right? <laughs> yeah, but you know, sometimes you make the project fit the time you have. Right. And I think having 11 weeks and having a very focused uh, set of processes that we'd like them to accomplish, which Michael Camp has done an amazing job with his Center for Entrepreneurship, helping detail what needs to be done. And it helps them focus on what's most important. So for the winner, $200,000 is committed 
to at least one of the teams. Is that right? Yeah, and, and winner uh, may be a little misnomer because no one actually uh, stands out on top per se. Uh, each of the companies will be exposed to venture capitalists like myself, uh, angel investors uh, like, you know, a few dozen different mentors are angel investors. So many uh, of them will likely receive capital from us. Uh, but we've made a commitment to put at least $200,000 of follow-on capital into these businesses. And we were able to do that just because we invest in the area and we knew that there were great opportunities already. And this just uh, helped us focus into the best of the, those opportunities. Yeah, and you'll be naming one winner, but there, there certainly can be more than one winner because yes. five, six, eight companies could get some capital. Yes, right? okay. correct. Um, what do you think about fostering entrepreneurs? Uh, what's the biggest challenge in getting past the idea stage? Yeah, we, we have a lot of discussions around the academic calls about can you, can you teach entrepreneurship? And I think a lot of it's a little inherent in your personality. Uh, but that biggest leap forward is really the comfort or the confidence of reaching out to customers, uh, explaining what you're going to do, and trying to get really valid feedback on is this worth what I think it is to you? And uh, that intellectual honesty to say maybe it isn't as good as I thought it was. What do I need? What do I need to retool about this to make it truly valuable to my potential customers? Uh, because an idea, there's a lot of great ideas out yeah. there. It's just a how to bring it from here to there. Yeah. I would suppose you, you can't get stuck in your ways either, can you? You have to constantly yeah. change through the process. To, you have to have lots of uh, lots of flexibility. Um, when uh, we talk about it in the venture world, we often say ideas are worth nothing. Uh, it's all about execution. And execution is really getting in front of the customers and understanding their true needs. Well, you've had great success. And it's not just you know college kids. Uh, there's a lot of older people out there as well trying to do startups. What's your best advice for them? Um, you know, follow something you're passionate about to start with. And if you find something you're passionate about that you can translate into a business vision, and then from a business vision move to a, a mission, which is how do I apply this to an industry, and then drill it down to a strategic plan and finally a financial plan. And building all that out in advance with feedback from your customers and testing that and, and bootstrapping it, which is the concept of trying to have the the partners of your business finance it as opposed to just uh, trying to find capital and hoping your your business idea was a good one. Uh, so it was a big answer, but there's lots of pieces to it. No, great advice. Rich Langdale from NCT Ventures. Rich, yeah. thanks for joining us. We Thank appreciate you. it. Appreciate it. Coming up on Ohio Means Business, why entrepreneurship is thriving in Ohio and what that means for job creation in the future. Well, it's no secret that Ohio faces many challenges keeping the best and brightest minds here in the state. That's why the state of Ohio has created the One Fund, a newly formed grant sponsored by the Ohio Third Frontier Program. It's the fuel behind the 10X Accelerator Program. And joining us now for the bottom line is Ben Lagerman, Risk Capital Program Manager for the Ohio Department of Development. Ben. Thanks for your time. We do appreciate it. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. One of the things that you guys uh, have done so well of late is uh, working with young people, particularly Fisher, which they do well. Uh, how's the partnership going? Oh, it's going fantastic. We're very excited about the momentum we have. And this is a pilot program. It's something new. It's something different we haven't done before. And uh, it's turning out very well. So. Why do you think things need like this need to be done? Well, you need to stay on the cutting edge. Mm -hmm. uh, other states are doing this. Other uh, areas are doing uh, accelerator programs. And uh, we really believe this is the next great frontier for uh, building companies, building entrepreneurs, and uh, really just focusing resources in areas that can uh, provide jobs and uh, you know innovation. Did you guys at the Department of Development look at other states and what other states are doing to become successful in other programs like this and then model it off of that? Or was it oh, yeah. more of your own idea? Oh, absolutely. Uh, we always are looking at the environment. Mm -hmm. We're always uh, you know, calibrating what we're doing with what, what other people are doing. 
Uh, and this is really modeled after Y Combinator and Techstars, which are sort of the established accelerators in the area. Uh, we don't believe there's just one way to do it. We believe there's probably lots of ways to succeed, and this is a, a flavor of that. Uh, and we're very happy with the uh, implementation that the Center for Entrepreneurship at The Ohio State University uh, Fisher called Job Business has uh, done so far. Well, part of your job is bringing business into you and Mark Kwame and even Governor Kasich is bringing business into the state. Uh, this focuses on more of the young minds. Yes. Uh, what's your philosophy on that? Why is it the young people that are so important to you? Well, the young people are where a lot of the innovation happens. And it's not necessarily because they're smarter or better, but uh, in some the, cases they're smarter. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah right. a, a lot of times. Yeah, yeah. but right. uh, they're not uh, they're not constrained by uh, you know their their life choices. They don't have yeah. kids yet they don't have all the all the uh, you know build up of life and they're able to de devote their time you know 80 hours a day, you know, seven days a week to really starting companies and just having that passion that maybe we tend to lose over time. So uh, we really believe it's important to uh, really foster those young minds and foster those young entrepreneurs and seed them into Ohio. Some of these high tech uh, industries and these high tech uh, ideas, it's really the young mind that really latches onto that better than anybody. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> they're, they're, they're on the cutting edge. They know what the next generation is going to want. They're not burdened by the, you know, the legacy technologies or legacy ideas. So they're able to really embrace the, the new innovative concepts and really deploy them. We mentioned Mark Kwame, um, Governor Kasich also, they have both preached this for about a, year, about a year now, is that Ohio is open for business or that Ohio should be open for business. Yes. What does that mean to you at the Department of Development? At the Department of Development, that means that we're actively engaging uh, companies, individuals, entrepreneurs, uh, the finance industry, all the different components that are necessary to really create jobs, create innovation, and, and really have that growth potential that really has kind of been lacking for a number of years now. now we've We've seen some successes in the, in the past year, surely, Absolutely. but in, uh, in all honesty, how's it going? Are, are, you, are you getting the results that you want, or do you give it a B, do you give it an 80%, what? <laughs> well, we're making good progress. Uh -huh. uh, we definitely know where we want to go. Uh, we definitely see a long uh, lead time in there, but this isn't the kind of thing you can do in one day or one year. We've been laying the seeds for innovation through the Ohio Third Frontier and similar programs for over a decade now. And we're starting to reap those rewards. We're starting to see these entrepreneurs, these companies, and these technologies mature and, he and achieve those growth targets. But now it's time to double down and reinforce those, uh, you know, those initiatives. And we're really, really positive about the outlook right now. It's kind of like a, the domino effect. Oftentimes when you make the investment or start the idea, you don't see the payoff because it doesn't directly connect with what you did a, a year or so ago, right? <laughs> Absolutely. So on occasion, we're able to see really quick turnarounds and really quick payoffs. And those are the ones right. that a lot of people focus on. Uh, but a lot of the innovation economy is really about farming. You know, you lay the seeds, you have to take time to nurture and grow um, and we've noticed in a lot of other states where they haven't had the long-term view they've planted the seeds and then uh, really just taken a quick look and uh, killed programs while they're in their infancy we view that we're maturing and it's time to adapt and grow our programs to suit the needs of the growing you know crops that are out there at the Department of Development what do you view as your biggest hurdle your biggest challenge right now uh, really the biggest challenge is the capital mm -hmm. uh, we, we notice that there's definitely a capital deficit and a capital mismatch for the businesses. We have a lot of innovative businesses. We have a really good infrastructure. You know, Ohio was one of the innovation centers of the world in the previous uh, century, but we sort of lost our way and a lot of the capital formation that was necessary for those entrepreneurs and those startups really didn't develop here. In the meantime, we saw California, Boston really sort of take on the, uh, the venture model. And uh, this is what we're uh, what we're seeing with the 10x program, and uh, what we're seeing with Third Frontier certainly mm -hmm. is providing these startups with capital and getting the the dominoes falling, as they say. Uh, ben Lagerman, thanks for your time. Pleasure. We, we Thank do you. appreciate. Thanks for joining us. Uh, just a reminder: Ohio means business airs multiple times on ONN. Check us out Wednesdays at 7:30, Sundays at 10:30 and 7:30, and Mondays at 12:30. Episodes are also available on our website. You'll also find previews of upcoming shows. Just visit onntv.com and click on the Ohio Means Business link. I'm Mike Kallmeyer. Thanks for joining us. We will see you next time on Ohio Means Business.